This is my house. Hello there, I've been pretty harsh in recent videos about the actors Noel Clarke and John Barrowman from Doctor Who and the allegations against them from their time on that and other shows, so the premise of this video was to try and listen to their side of the story. What's the best steel man I can come up with to defend them, and does it hold water? And lastly, I may talk about, is it fair to cancel them on the basis of these allegations? In short, for Clark, the allegations were a string of women accusing him of harassment of the type they'd maybe only be on board with if it was their boyfriend, and a lot less so if it's someone at work. He's accused by a female driver of groping her and inviting her to his hotel room repeatedly. A long-haired makeup woman accuses him of saying to her that he liked women with long hair because it gave him something to hold on to when he was doing them from behind. And a third separate woman claimed he made a habit of asking her if she wanted a piece of his dark chocolate. All in all, he's facing allegations from some 20 separate women. Now in recent videos, I've had footage of kittens after strange demands from some viewers, but now the kittens have presented a problem because I used some small clips from kitten videos and the owner of one of the kitten videos called Tiny Kitten copyright struck my channel. I'm not sure I'm on could argue in good faith that my videos were not fair use and transformative from a video that purely consisted of kittens, but there you go. I'm still thinking about what to do about that because I don't want to put up with it, but nor do I particularly want legal action. So sadly, the kittens have had to be taken out back and burned. This is why we can't have nice things. Meanwhile, John Barrowman is accused of getting his D out every five seconds and rubbing it on people, objects, also a calm windscreen, all while on set recording things like Doctor Who and Touchwood. Sorry, Torchwood, my mistake. And oddly, some of the allegations against Barrowman actually came from Noel Clark. Turned up and Russell was there as well. They kind of came over. So. And Barrowman's there taking his dick out yes. every five seconds. Or that, you know. <laughs> every five seconds, just hitting it on everything like that. <laughs> I can't help but laugh. Like Chris will be like serious. I'm concentrating on my acting. <laughs> John Barrowman. Yeah. Uh, we had no work. all in good fun. All well, in good fun. The, the guy is all, all the time laughing and smiling and taking it out. <laughs> all the time. Do you remember the time you put it on your shoulder in the makeup drug? Yes, I do. In my. Yeah. I'm not going to go into great depth about what they're supposed to have done here, because I've done it before in other videos. I'll put a link up and timestamp it if you want more information on that. So how did they respond to this? Well, Barrowman did a number of interviews, including this one on UK television with Lorraine Kelly. And how did he respond to the allegations? Well, Barrowman says it was all silliness and that the people passing judgment were not there and it's all been exaggerated and overblown and it wasn't harassment. And he's right, I wasn't there. The thing he's accused of doing sound really bad, but if you're not there to judge the context and see for yourself, it's hard to know if it's been blown out of all proportion. He also says he wouldn't do it now and what was acceptable back then has changed to the current day. He's not denying, however, that he did these things. Or at least he doesn't seem to be denying that he did something a lot like them that's been overblown. So what's the fairest I can be to John Barrowman? Well, there's an anecdote about the comic Peter Sellers, who had allegedly had a big argument with longtime friend and working partner Spike Milligan. And supposedly what Sellers did to apologise to Milligan was to knock on his door late at night. And when Milligan opened it, he found Sellers standing there wearing nothing at which point they both burst out laughing. So how okay is nudity? It's quite context dependent, I'd say. Were the colleagues on board with Barrowman's alleged joking in horseplay? It seems like Camille Kadoori may have been at least. She doesn't seem outraged in this clip, but was she uncomfortable at the time and just playing along because she didn't want to get accused of being a troublemaker or risk losing her job? Or was she fine with it? Is she still fine with it now? That's up for her to say, not me. It's like Barrowman allegedly rubbing his Johnson on some glass. Is that okay? I mean, it sounds really bad. But if it was a close friend in your car, you have a weird, jokey relationship where you do that sort of crazy stuff. Maybe it's okay? The context changes if it's the same thing. A man rubbing his Johnson on some glass, only instead of a friend, it's a stranger. 
and it's a petrified 13-year-old girl who's screaming and the man is visibly, let's say, excited. It changes again, if this time it's the exact same excited man, but it's the window of a junior school or a car full of six-year-olds, and without being there and knowing the full context, it's hard to know which one of these it was. So do I like John Barrowman? I'm not sure. I'll always remember him for the classic line from the film Shark Attack 3 Megalodon. You know, I'm really wired. What do you say I take you home and eat your and that line in the film supposedly worked, by the way. She did go home with him in the film. Supposedly Barrowman ad-libbed that line and then they just kept it in. So they the dialogue was terrible and there was one particular scene the director asked me to get something out of the, the, the female who was, I was acting opposite. I leaned over to her and I ad-libbed this and I said, you know, I'm feeling kind of wired. Uh, what do you say I take you home and eat <laughs> right? <laughs> it was a joke to make her laugh. They left it in the freaking movie. <laughs> John Barrowman is a bit of a lad. I have a feeling if a guy tried that line in real life, he'd end up in jail. To any female viewers, how would you rate that line in terms of effectiveness? Have I been doing it wrong all this time? Or do you have to get attacked by a megalodon first? So should John Barrowman be cancelled? Well, I have mixed feelings on that. What does cancellation even mean? If based on these stories, people are so disgusted with what he supposedly did that they don't want to watch anything with him in it ever again, what am I supposed to do, make them? If people casting films don't want to have John Barrowman associated with their project, again, that's kind of on them. Are there some organisations that should not be allowed to cancel him? Like, would it be okay if every bank decided they didn't want to have him as a customer? That's probably going a bit far with it. But if people want John Barrowman on their production and people want to go and see it, it's none of my business. I'm not saying he should never work again and should go and join a monastery. And people not wanting to work with him is not the same as mobs putting pressure on people not to work with him. That's probably also crossed a line. John Barrowman allegedly did a series called All Star Musicals after his cancellation, and he was talking about All Star Musicals 4 in the interview that I watched. It's a musical starring a mix of UK TV presenters like Michaela Strachan, Fern Britton, Joy Was Brandreth and Radzi, and it sounds like possibly the worst thing I've ever heard. But I can just not watch it, and I'm not going to watch it. But it's like people boycotting Bud Light. If I didn't agree with it, what am I supposed to do about it? Make them buy it? Pin them down and make them drink it? I'm pretty sure that would count as cruel and unusual punishment. So watching Barrowman talk has maybe softened my position on him a little. So how about Noel Clark? I watched a full 1 hour and 45 minute interview Clark gave to a channel called Rob Moore. Heaven help me in a video titled Noel Clark reveals the truth on being cancelled and harassment allegations and the effect for me was the exact opposite of what happened with Barrowman. Noel Clark did not come out of this interview looking at all good to me. And it's hard not to feel bad for a guy who's worked very hard and claims to have lost everything. He claims multiple series and projects got cancelled and he got kicked out of his own business. But as I watched the interview and watched Noel Clark talk, it was hard to avoid that he was putting up some serious red flags in his telling of things. He wasn't outright denying any of the allegations against him, part of which I can understand as he claims ongoing legal action, but he kept on snitching on himself and making non-denial denials. One of the accusations against Clark was the woman with the long hair and the doing them from behind line. So when Clark says of his accusers in this interview, he did a lot for some of these people and never laid a finger on them. That to me is a huge red flag because the accusation from her was not that you touched her. The accusations were what you supposedly said. When you deny something you haven't been accused of and ignore the part you have been accused of, it makes you sound very guilty and he did that multiple times in this interview. It's like if a woman claims she was driving a man and one of his friends and the man started to touch her. And the man responds to this accusation saying, that's not true. Two of my friends were in the car. Do you get it? It comes across like a tacit admission that you did those things. He also kept on trying to point the blame at other people. He told an anecdote of an unnamed friend who he claims had said to him, I can't believe you got into trouble for the things you did. 
Another actor they know has done far worse. And it's whataboutism to try and divert attention from the things he supposedly did. And he did that several times in this interview as well. And was that why he was telling stories about John Barrowman? To divert attention away from himself? Because frankly, I'm very suspicious now. He claimed that he'd been set up and targeted because he's an ambitious and hardworking alpha and people are jealous of him. He also comes across as very egotistical. When I tell people that I think I'm the best, it's not because I believe I'm better than you. It's because I believe I can be. Self-belief. He said people were out to get him because he's from a working class background. He claims it was because of his ethnicity as well and he doesn't really provide proof for any of it. And thinking you are the best is different from thinking you can be. He claims the things that were done were done in a different time in terms of dating and the rules were different. And that is partially true. I never thought we'd get to the stage where a young man saying hello once to a girl would be enough to constitute harassment, but here we are. But at no point in flirting would I class multiple of the things that he's accused of as being acceptable flirting. Just groping a non-consenting woman, as one woman is allegedly accusing him of, I would not class as flirting. Okay, devil's advocate time. Best case scenario, there's a woman you like, you're Noel Clark eating a chocolate bar, and you ask her, would you like some of my dark chocolate? It's racy and provocative, granted. Has it crossed a line? Maybe. I suppose it depends on who you say it to. Maybe it was intended as some harmless flirting or a joke, but the woman is claiming he did this regularly, and unlike Camille Kaduri, she does not seem okay with it. Worst case scenario, the guy didn't even have a chocolate bar. The woman looked disgusted the first time he said it, and after that, he still did it over and over again. Nor does the interviewer help his case when he asked Noel Clark what he thought of the Andrew Tate case. Do you, um, do you know Andrew Tate or know who he is? I know who he is, yeah. yeah. Do you think, in a way, his journey he has gone on the last few months similar to yours? Yeah. Because he may be the very last person Noel Clark should be wanting to hitch his wagon to right now. So, did Noel Clark do the things that are claimed? Ultimately, I don't know, but this interview, if anything, left me thinking he probably did. You'd think actors would be better at lying. Maybe Noel Clark is innocent. Maybe they both are. Or maybe John Barrowman's just a better actor. You know, I'm really wired. What do you say I take you home and eat your I can't block out, please lock out, images of Johnny B getting his out. I can't do it. I can't do it tonight. She Never rub another man's rhubarb.